All right. This morning I was just studying my Bible and I was asking the Lord to give me a very simple explanation of the very complicated and difficult subjects in the Bible. And as I was studying, the Lord began to help me, and I was able to draw this chart. This chart you will not find anywhere. Okay. You won't find it on the internet, you won't find it on the Google. So this is basically the Lord gave me this morning while I was studying the Word of God. And I would encourage you to follow through and draw it as I will teach you. And for those who are on watching us online, I would encourage you if you could uh, uh, subscribe to us and follow us. Press that bell icon and be in touch with, with us as we teach. and. Preach the word of God and be a blessing to you. All right. So today what we are going to study is dividing the Bible rightly. Dividing the Bible rightly. rightly. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. Study to show thyself a prude unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. truth. Now you can rightly divide the word of truth or you can... Falsely divide the word of truth. Understand? When you are not able and when you do not know how to rightly divide the word of truth, you will be chopping the word of God. And that's called hyper dispensation. Rightly dividing the word of truth is called as dispensation. What is dispensation? Dispensation simply means God dispensing his plans and responsibility to man in different ages. You understand? That is dispensation. So when you rightly divide the word of truth, you won't be ashamed. But if you chop the word of truth, then you're going to ruin the whole chicken curry. Hmm? Imagine you take a chicken and you chop, 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 chop. What do you get? You'll get no pieces at all. You understand? Yes. So you need to know how to uh, rightly divide the word of truth. All right. So what we're going to do is, uh, basically, I wanted to show the New Testament only, but let us go into the Old Testament also. All right? So we'll draw a small box. The Old Testament. All right? So what happened is, and now we can divide the Old Testament also into different segments, but I'm not focusing on the Old Testament. We are not living in the Old Testament right now. We are living right now in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And this is most important. But I will just pass through immediately with the Old Testament. So when you take the Old Testament, all right, you take the Old Testament as a history for us as a New Testament Christian. For us now who are living, the Old Testament is a history. It is his story. Whose story? God's story with God's people and in the world. Understand? So Old Testament, we take the whole thing from Genesis to Malachi as a history of God's story and the history of the people of Israel and the, and the beginning and how uh, things carried on. You understand? So we see that in the Old Testament. So when you study the Old Testament, right, you know, from uh, Adam to Eve, how did they get saved? Or how did God forgive their sin? Did they have to do any work? No, God did the sacrifice, right? God did it. What is that? Grace. Cain and Abel, how was Abel justified? Because of his work or faith? Abel. Is that correct spelling? Okay. He pleased the Lord by faith. Understand? Blood. He brought the lamb, right? Grace. Take, talk about Abraham. His faith was counted for righteousness, right? Grace. Noah. Okay, it, it, Noah should come about. Noah found grace in the sight of God. Right? Alright, Lord. God called him righteous. Found grace in the sight of God. Lo, uh, Job. God called him a righteous man. He found grace in the sight of God. Alright? So what we see is in the Old Testament... Um, even before the law was given, people are finding grace in the sight of God. Then the law came. When Moses came, law came. In Exodus chapter 20, God gave 
law. Why did God give law? Can law save anybody? According to the Bible? No. God, law was to protect the people of Israel. God gave law to protect the people of Israel. God gave law to be a schoolmaster for the people of Israel. To draw them to whom? To Christ. Law never justified anybody. Law never saved anybody. Righteousness of man does not save anybody. It's like a filthy rag. Book of Isaiah. Understand? Tells us. So even about Moses, if you read, you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, what happened? By faith. Understand? So the law came here and the law was given for what? To protect. To protect the people of Israel because they were God's people. Understand? So God gave them law so they may live rightly without any problem, that all things may happen well and and uh, and God gave law as a schoolmaster, right? Yes. As a schoolmaster to lead them to whom? To the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand? So the law. Well, this is this is where I will stop. Now, uh, don't make a problem with this. If you have questions, anybody uh, send me an email or whatever. But we will be doing more on this in a in a more elaborate way. Okay? But I'm just taking it in this manner. Bible, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, be holy as I am holy. holy. That's what God said. Can anybody be as holy as God's, God is holy by his righteousness? No. no way. Understand? So no one can be justified by law. No one can be saved by his own righteousness. We all need the righteousness of God. Understand? Yes. Even in the Old Testament, people... Finding God's righteousness, people finding God's grace, people trusting in God and in His Word. Understand? Well, now we come to the New Testament. So, this is where we will focus more. And this is just, um, I just <coughs> did a little bit. Maybe we will do another study on it and elaborate more on it. Now, when we come into the New Testament, the New Testament is divided as... Gospel, right? Yes. Gospel. And then the New Testament is divided into... Oh, uh, let's get this. After the Gospel, what is the book? Acts. Acts. Alright? Then after the book of Acts, what we have? We have the Epistles, right? Yes. So we have Romans... to Philemon. Alright? We have Romans 2. Philemon. This is the Pauline epistle. Apostle Paul writes this. Then we have we have Hebrews to Jude. The general epistle. Okay? Then we have what? Revelation. This was beautiful. As I prayed and asked the Lord, this began to just flow. Okay? And I would encourage you, if you if you follow this chart and study this, this will save you from a lot of headaches, a lot of shamefulness, a lot of insult, and you will be at peace with God through His Word. There will be no confusion in the Word of God. When you falsely chop the Word of God, or falsely divide the Word of God, confusion comes. You understand? Now, the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are no four gospels. There are how many gospels? One gospel in four different books by four different authors. How God revealed. Now, are they all saying the same thing all the time? No, they say the same thing all the time, um, most of the time, but then each one has some unique story to tell us about the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? So, uh, just like, not everybody tells everything, but each one tells some unique things. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell us a lot, of, lot of, uh, about Jesus Christ, uh, the same thing, but each one has certain unique things also to tell us. Understand? So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel. Now, what is the gospel according, uh, what, what does uh, Paul says in Romans chapter 116? It is the 
Father unto salvation. Now remember, the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel in action. It is the gospel in? In action. What do you mean? What I mean? I mean the birth of Jesus Christ. Right? The birth of Jesus is born. It's God who is manifest in the flesh. Correct? That's the act of gospel in action. Gospel in action. God is manifest in the flesh. He lives a sinless perfect life. Right? He goes preaching and teaching, doing miracles, wonderful things, great things. Alright? And then what happened? The Bible tells he takes our sins upon him. And he died on the cross. Did he die on the cross? Yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Yes. Did he shed his precious blood? Yes. yes. He was buried? Yes. yes. He rose again on the third day? Yes. yes. Where, did you, where do we read all these things? We read all these things right here. Right? Yes. God. God in flesh. Alright? Sinless perfect life. Right? And in God's work, the work of Christ. Hmm? Like preaching and healing and all this thing. And then we read, He dying on the cross for yours and for my sin. Did he bleed? Yes. yes. The blood of Christ. We read here. The burial. Resurrection. Do we read about the second coming? That he is coming back? Yes. yes, he tells about his coming back. Alright? So what we read in the gospel, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, is the gospel in action. God manifests in the flesh, living a sinless perfect life, dying for our sins on the cross by shedding his precious blood, was buried and rose again on the third day and is coming again. Right? We read in the gospel. You know what? A lot of people say Jesus preached law in the gospel so people were saved by law. Nobody can be saved by law because nobody can keep the law. You understand? So when we read this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read a couple of verses from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John trying to show you the gospel. Alright? Matthew chapter 1 verse number uh, Matthew chapter 1 we read and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin he will say he's not telling you do 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 you do this you do that no he will save his people from their sins right yes. all right so Jesus did not come to make them do something Jesus came to save his people from their sins. That's grace. Understand? Mark says in chapter 1 verse 15, And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. You need to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? This is the gospel. Repent means what? Stop believing what you were believing all this unrighteous thing and now believe in me. Alright? Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, turning away from your wicked belief and turning to the truth. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Saying no to false and yes to Jesus. Repentance is a change of mind that leads to change of action that leads to change of destiny. Understand? So, so the Bible talks about believing in the gospel. Not doing something. You are saved by believing in the gospel. Luke says in chapter 2 verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This is a priest in the temple. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Okay, and what he saying? And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Then took he him up in the earth. The Bible says, And he came by the Spirit unto the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus, what is it? I'm not able to see this because I made a printout. Let me read from the, this. Alright, Luke chapter 2, verse 25 onwards. 
All right. Luke chapter 2 verse 25 onwards. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same was man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. salvation. God's salvation. He didn't do anything. He saw it. You know, he is holding it. Jesus is our salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. For thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Now look at this. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. All right. So Jesus is the light to the Gentiles and the glory for the people of Israel. Israel. He came to save everybody. Yes, the gospel belongs to the Jew. But it is also every time in the gospel when you read a, Jew, a Gentile came and received the gospel also. And Jesus never said no. You understand? All right. So here it says a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people is right. So what we are seeing is, uh, I mean, I can go on through many other verses, but just to keep things short, I'm making it. Then we go to the gospel of John. Why this is important? Because there are many false brethren who teach that Jesus did not preach uh, the gospel of grace. He, he taught them to do the law and keep the law to be saved. No. That is not what the Bible teaches. Look at John chapter 3 verse 16. Everybody knows this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. Amen. See salvation is not by doing the works of righteousness or doing law. But by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright. Simeon saw the salvation and believed. Uh, we read in Mark. Believe in the gospel. Matthew. Jesus has come to. Save his people. He's the savior. And they all need to believe. Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse number 17. For God sent not his son into the world. Not only in Jerusalem. Into the world. No, into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. We are reading this in the gospel. All right. Now look at John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, you and I need the righteousness of God. The righteousness of Christ. Because our righteousness will not save us. In any ages. Right from Genesis to Revelation. Man's righteousness. Man keeping law. Man doing this and that will not save him. No man is justified by no. All are justified. The just shall live by faith. faith. Alright. Now look at John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that... Now what happened? He's going to the Samaritan woman at Samaria. Alright. And he sits there at the well and talks. She's not a Jew. And he says to her, Whosoever drinketh of the water what that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. What Jesus gives, not what you do. Understand? Then look at verse number 42. And said unto the woman. Now what happened between this? That woman believes in Jesus as a Messiah. Right? And then she goes into the village. And she speaks to the people in the village. And said unto the woman. Now these people come to Jesus. And they hear what Jesus is speaking. Now these people uh, in Samaria, they are telling to this woman. Now we believe. Not because of thy saying. For we have heard him ourselves. And know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You understand? These people are not Jews. These are in Samaria. And they come, they hear what Jesus said. And they believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior. Right? They believe. Salvation is by believing in Jesus. You understand? 
Now, John 6, 35, and Jesus said unto them, I'm the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Believing in Jesus, not doing so and so. John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you that he shall die in your sin. If he believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sin. Jesus is not preaching gospel. Jesus is telling them to believe in him. To be saved. Understand? John 20 verse 31. But these now. As John finishes the gospel. He finishes with these. On the second last chapter of John. But these are written. That he might believe that Jesus is the. Christ. The son of God. And that believing he might have life. Through his. Alright. So what we read. We read that Apostle uh, John as he write, he makes it very clear that it is by believing. Matthew says by believing. Mark says by believing. Luke says by believing. Alright? So, this is gospel in action. And we read Jesus is the gospel. He is the salvation. He is God who became man, came into this world. He died on the cross by shedding his precious blood. Was buried and he rose again on the third day. Here is the gospel. Gospel in action is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Once that is done, then we go to the book of Acts. What is the book of Acts? Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit. The action of the Holy Spirit. Understand? The work of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, what we read is the church is in infancy stage. The church is a little baby born. When it is born, John chapter 20, when Jesus breathed and told them, receive either Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 6, the church is formed, right? In John chapter 20, the church is born. In the book of Acts, the church is a baby. It is an infancy. So when the church is a baby in an infancy stage, just beginning on the stage, you don't make doctrines out of this. See, the problem today is a lot of people are um, building their churches on Peter and a lot of people are building their churches on Paul, but we are supposed to build the church on Jesus Christ. Amen. When you build church on Peter, you get Roman Catholic Church and you get the only Jesus movement, you get all the cults. When you build the church only on Paul, then you have hyper dispensationalism and other cults. You got to be careful. Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus says, I will build my church. We need to build church upon Jesus Christ, not upon the apostles. Get it? So, in the book of Acts, what we read is, the book of Acts is basically, it is an infancy. Alright? Infancy of church. Don't make a doctrine out of it. They're just moving, moving into... Maturity. From childhood into maturity. That's why certain things like, why did they do this? Why did they do now? Now look, this is how they are doing. The church is moving. Understand? From babyhood, from childhood into maturity. The church is just born in John chapter 20. The church is just empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, to do the work. The church is now for moving it and growing. Understand? So we should not be making um, doctrines out of it. Now, can we find some doctrines? Yes. But we've got to be a little bit careful about how we are. So the church is now moving from Jews to Gentiles. And to the uttermost part of the earth. That's what Jesus said. Isn't it? When the Holy Ghost will come upon you, then you will go into where? Into Judah, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to uh, the most part of the world. So the gospel in Acts is moving from one place into other, into other. Understand? Alright. So what are they preaching? They are preaching the gospel. How? Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in the book of Acts, what happened? Chapter 10. Peter is preaching. To Cornelius and the people there in his house. While he was preaching, what happened? Suddenly what happened? 
Even before he could conclude, the Holy Ghost falls upon them. What is that? Grace. Right? He didn't tell them, do this and do that. Falls upon them. And they believe. And Peter says, you know, can anyone resist, uh, you know, stop them from getting baptized? They have already received the word. They received. They believed. That is called grace through faith. All right? So we have, then Paul says in Acts chapter 16, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. To be saved, you need to believe the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do? Who he is? So when we talk about believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, so the question is, what should I believe in the Lord Jesus? You need to believe the gospel. Right? And, and we have a very good video on, on the YouTube. Um, that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4 is not the complete gospel. It's a part of the gospel. And so we explain the complete gospel there. And that's important. All right? So to believe the gospel. Believing, believing in the Lord Jesus. What should I believe in the Lord Jesus? That he is God manifest in the flesh. To live a sinless perfect life. He died on the cross because of you and me. By shedding his precious blood. Was buried and he rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. Without knowing this you are going to hell. But if you know, understand and believe and receive Jesus. You will be saved and will have everlasting life. Then after the Acts. We come to Romans through. Philemon. This is basically a commonly known by people as Pauline Epistle. What is this? Pauline Epistle. <coughs> Romans 2. Philemon. What you find in this epistle is the richness of Christian doctrines. And you and I should study this over and over and over again. Book of Romans through Philemon is super rich in doctrines. This will help you and strengthen you. Understand? But there are many things what Paul doesn't say here. And God reveals that to these people right here. And many things what these people don't say, Paul says here. Understand? So this is our doctrinal book. So Romans through Philemon is, is about the church doctrine. It's about church doctrine. Romans through Philemon talks about our state. What is our state? Our state is we are now made holy by God when we believed in him. Now we are the child of God. We are his and it cannot be lost. We have a relationship. It talks about our relationship. All right. It talks about our salvation. It talks about our identity. It talks about Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So that is what Romans through Philemon we read. This is, if we want to find the doctrine, we go here. Romans through Philemon. Now the problem with many people are, they are building their churches only on Paul. By rejecting the other things. Can you sit on a chair with only one leg? You'll fall. You need all the food, right? You need the whole thing to sit comfortably and perfectly and balance well. If you sit on one leg, what will happen? You will fall. And that's the problem. Some are building their church on Peter. Some are building their church on Paul. That is the problem. You and I need to build our church on Jesus. Which means from year to year, rightly dividing. This is for our doctrine. This is talking about who we are in Christ. This talks about that we are now having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then, so this is the Pauline epistle. Then we have Hebrews too. There are a lot of people say, no, no, this is for the Jewish people. Only this is for us, Gentile. Jesus came for all. For God so loved the Amen. world. And that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, the Jews and Gentiles. Understand? So, this is the church doctrine. Now this is the church living. Hebrews to Jude, what we read? We read? Christian living. 
Christian living. Or you can say here, instead of church doctrine, you can say Christian doctrine. Alright? Or church or so Christian living. Here he speaks about our relationship. Who? Apostle Paul. That was revealed to Apostle Paul, not only to Apostle Paul, but also to the other apostles and prophets. Understand? Now there are some people say only Apostle Paul knew. Uh, look at Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, are you understanding? Yes. Is that simple? Yes. All right. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 and I will read fast for you. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me toward you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a for in few words. words. So a lot of people say only Apostle Paul knew everything. And God did not reveal to other apostles. That's why we only stick with Apostle Paul. No, no, no. Look, 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 read down. The Bible says, which verse number 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto what? His holy apostles. Not only apostles, but apostles. All the apostles. Holy Apostles and Prophets by the Spirit. Look at Colossians. Look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generation. But now is made manifest to his saints. Understand? So what is the mystery? Mystery is the hypostatical union. It's the coming together of the Jews and Gentiles into the body of Christ. That's the mystery. Because before the Jews thought, oh, we cannot mingle with them. We cannot go with the Gentiles. Understand? But, and that was not revealed in the Old Testament. That's called hypostatical union. When the Jew and the Gentile, when they trust in Jesus Christ, they come into one body as one. And the body is the church. You getting it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. All right. So, um, then uh, this is for Christian doctrine or church doctrine. Philemon to Hebrew. Then we come to uh, Philem, uh, Romans to Philemon. Then we come to Hebrew to Jews. Remember, there are a lot of false brethren out there. They say this is not for us. This is for the Jews. And this is for the Jews. They say this is for the Jews. This is for the Jews. Only this is for us. No way. All is for us. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. And it is profitable. You understand? Now when you say this is for the Jews and this is for the you know what you're calling? You're calling Jesus a liar. When you say the Old Testament people were saved by law, by their righteousness, you're calling God as a liar. You're calling Jesus as a liar. You're calling the prophets as a liar. You're calling Apostle Paul as a liar. You're calling all of the apostles as a liar. Because all God's servants said, not by your righteousness, but by His. Not by your law, but by His grace. You understand? Yes. Now, Hebrew to Jew is about Christian living. Here, Christian doctrines. Now, here is practical. You understand? Now, when Jesus in the New Testament, when Jesus told the people, you know, if you wish to be my disciple, take up your cross, go sell everything, hate everybody, and then follow me. Is Jesus telling, um, the, you know, that verse people take and say, see, he's telling them to sell everything. So that is law. That is not law. That is discipleship. All disciples are Christians, but not all Christians are disciples. All Christians are not disciples. They are not consistently following. But all disciples are Christians. That's why in the book of Acts, the disciples were first called as Christians. Because the world identified these fellows are disciples, they're always following Christ. But there were many other Christians who are not, you know, they just got saved and they're sitting at home, not living for the Lord. They're Christians, but not disciples. Understand? So this speaks about the discipleship, living for the Lord. This speaking about the doctrines, our relationship. Who we are in Christ. So Hebrew to Jude is Christian living. Okay? Hebrew to Jude is Christian living. Now, Paul never tells us, if you fall in sin, what do you do? 
Paul doesn't tell us to confess our sins. Does Paul say, follow him to Hebrew? No. So certain things what God did not give Paul, God gave it to Peter and to John and to, and to other people who wrote this. You understand? Yes. So just because Paul doesn't say about we should not confess, uh, Paul does not speak about confession and forgiving, asking for forgiveness. And just because Paul doesn't say, what do you say? Oh, no, we are not supposed to confess it. You know what hyper dispensationalists do? They say, see, we are already forgiven. So if you sin, we don't have to confess our sins. We don't have to ask God for forgiveness. What is that? Arrogance, pride, self-righteousness, eyes are blinded by the devil. And that's why we need to pray, O oh God, enlighten our eyes of understanding. Amen? Amen. Then you'll be able to see this. The clear picture from Genesis to Revelation. It's all written for us. It is not written to us, but it is written for us. And everything is applicable for us. And it is profitable for us. It is beneficial for us. Alright? So Christian living. Now, if you sin, what happens? What happens if you sin against God as a Christian? What God will do? Chastise us. Is Paul saying that? No. Who says that? We read that in Hebrew. We read that in? Hebrew. The Pauline epistle doesn't say. The general epistle says that. So we talk here about chastisements. Alright? Chastisement. God will chastise if you sin. So what do I do if I sin? What should I do if I sin? I need to confess my sin. And if I confess, he's just and faithful to forgive all my sins. Right? Yes. Yes. Confess. Paul doesn't say that in Philemon, uh, Romans through Philemon. Confess and receive forgiveness. Okay? See, here I'm forgiven when I receive Jesus Christ. But then, today, when I fall, I need to go to Christ and say, Lord, I sinned against you by telling a lie. Please forgive me. And God will forgive you. This is our lifestyle. This is our doctrine. This is our lifestyle. This is speaking about if you sin, this is Christian living. If you sin, God will chastise you. Then, and what do you need to do? You need to confess immediately and receive God's forgiveness. Paul doesn't teach that. So what was not revealed to Paul is revealed to others. What is revealed, which is not revealed to other apostles, are revealed to Paul. And that's why we need all the apostles and all the prophets. Only then we can come to maturity. If you hold on only to this, you'll only get head knowledge and you'll be puffed up and you may not be even saved. If you're only holding to something, we need everything, everything is important. Everything is beneficial. Everything is profitable. That's when you become a Bible-believing Christian. If you only believe this, you become a Pauline Gentile. You don't become a Bible-believing Christian. A Bible-believing Christian is someone who believes from Genesis to Revelation and takes that as his applications for his life. You understand? Everything is necessary for Christians, for the church, right from Genesis. How will you even know anything about the beginning of the creation if you only hold on to this? <laughs> that is important for Christian. That also is a Christian necessity. That God created everything. Right? Yes. So, forgiveness. So ask for forgiveness. Then, um, how do I know? that? How do I do? Uh, how do I deal with the devil who is attacking us every day? The Bible says, draw nigh to God, and God will draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Does Paul teach that? Resist the devil? He talks about putting on the armor of God. He talks about certain things. But then James tells us, draw near to God, and God will get near to you. Right? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Alright? Does Paul ever tell us that we should come together, and it's commanded by God for us to assemble together? No. Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, forsake not the assembling of the saint. 
you know, lot of people only who hold on to this are the most laziest so-called Christian, if they are saved. The most laziest fellows you will ever find. Because, see, we are not commanded to assemble together. We can just sit at home with our pajamas and sit in front of a computer and watch our pastor online. Laziness. Headlong knowledge does what? Profit up. But in Hebrew we read, forsake not the assembling of the saints. Right? Yes. So what is not revealed to Paul is revealed to others. What is revealed to others are not revealed to Paul. And both all things are needed. Just like Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Everyone gave a very similar story, but then everyone has a unique story to tell us. And all that is needed. Make sense? Yes. 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 Then, the Bible speaks about discipleship. Alright? Mm. Hebrews to Jude. Discipleship. What is discipleship? Becoming radical for Christ. Willing to um, um, put your life into jeopardy for Christ. Discipleship. Forsaking. Hmm? We read that. In Hebrews 2, Jude. That's Christian life. So, in Romans to Philemon, Christ in us. Hebrews to Jude, Christ through us. So, that's what. What Paul is talking is, Paul is talking about Christ living in me. What Hebrews to Jude speaking is, Christ living through me. So that is what Christian life is. Christian life is, um, Christ, Christian life is uh, outliving of in living Christ. Christ. So in living, out living, both are important, right? Yes. If you say this is for Jew, <laughs> and this is only for us, then you know what happened? You may be high on drugs of stupidity. Stupidity. Absolutely stupidity, absurd. Which means the Holy Spirit is not revealing the truth because you have already made up in your mind because someone said something on the internet and you've been thinking, this is for the Jew, this is for the Jew, this is for, this is only for us. And it's wrong. Everything is for us. Alright? So Christ, okay, then we come to Revelation. Right? Yes. We come to Revelation. What is revelation? No, revelation is not for us. Revelation is for the Jew. No. Revelation is for us. The first three chapters is speaking about the church. Isn't it? Yes. yes. So revelation speaks about Christian hope. Christian hope. Revelation speaks about Christian hope. Revelation speaks about Christian victory. That we will be caught up. We have victory. Alright? We have overcome the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? The Antichrist. We have overcome. John chapter 2 we read about it. Young men, you have overcome the wicked one. What it means? You are not going through tribulation. You are going up to heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Christian victory. Then we read about Christian hope. Christian? Hope. Which is our hope? This? Our home is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen? Revelation speaks about it. Revelation chapter 4 and 5. We are in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we read in the book of Revelation that God tells us, hey, this is what it is. And then I'm going to tell you more about what's happening on the earth while you are in heaven. The doom of the world. Alright? Doom of the world. The doom of the Antichrist. The doom um, of Satan. Alright? And then Christian climax. Christian? Climax. climax. What does it mean? We come with Jesus along with him and destroy everything and we reign with Christ forever and ever in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven together. Amen? Amen. Amen? My dear friend, this is what God gave me this morning as I was studying my word. Amen. So that we don't get confused. We don't just throw certain part out and pick certain things. Bible is not a tree with what fruit you want and what fruit you don't want. 
That will make you a lazy person. Bible is the bread of life. Amen. Yes. Everything is important. Yes. Whether you like it or not, everything is important. Yes. In a bitter God, you may not like it, but it's very healthy. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. So everything. And you know one thing is, in every age of life, one thing we see is the grace of God. Amen. Amen. That man is justified only by faith. Yes. Yes. Not by anything. You cannot be saved by your righteousness. You cannot be saved by your law. You cannot be saved by keeping the law. You cannot be saved by doing this and doing that. And this. Any end. You need to believe in the God and in His Word. Yes. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ of who He is and what He has done for you. When you believe, grace through faith, you are saved. Amen. 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 So what is the gospel? The gospel is this. That Jesus Christ is the one true God. And God became man, came into this world, lived a sinless perfect life. And he took yours and my sins upon him and he died on the cross by shedding his precious blood was buried and rose again on the third day. He rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. And if you will come to him and believe in the Lord Jesus and receive him, he will give you the power to be called as the sons of God. You will be the child of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is the gospel. If you don't believe, you will die and go to hell. But if you turn away from your false belief and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe the gospel, you shall be saved. Yes. You'll be the child of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. 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 And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. 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 Not of works, lest any man should. Boast. 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 But then we should not stop there. Because we are saved, because we are saved, we should do good work. Look at verse number 9. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Even in the gospel when Jesus healed the people. He said you know what? Go and do good works. Amen? Amen. After you are saved. You are commanded to do good works. Why? For the rewards. You know one thing is? Paul reveals Three crowns between Romans to Philemon, he reveals three crowns. Between Hebrew to Jude, we read about more two crowns. God will give five crowns as a reward to his believers. Understand? Yes. But Paul reveals three and the others, Peter and John reveals two. And John says, you need to work for full reward. Amen? Amen. Amen. 2 John 8, I guess. So that's rightly dividing the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. So, um, all apostles are important. All right? And uh, you need to understand that is how you will become perfect. You cannot just hold on to Apostle Paul. You know what Apostle Paul himself says? Why are you fighting? I'm Apollos, I'm this and I'm that and I'm that. That is carnality. That's carnal. Exhort Jesus Christ, he says. God is the one who gives the increase. We are all just workmanship. Even Apostle Paul said that. So don't exalt Peter or don't exalt Paul. Don't make them Pope. They were not. These people who built their church upon Peter makes Peter their Pope. These people who built their church upon Paul makes Paul their Pope. Even, they, even though they will say, no, 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 we don't say but that's why you're doing it. You exalt Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The church is built upon Christ. Church is built for Christ. And church is built for his pleasure. Understand? Paul himself is humble enough to say that. And here it is. You cannot build. You cannot become mature sitting on one leg of a chair. You need everything. You need all the prophets, you need all the apostles for you to come into maturity, for you to come into 
edification. I'll read this verse and finish it here. Come to Ephesians. Chapter 4. And the Bible says, verse number 11, And he gave. Alright? He gave some apostles and some prophets, prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers who God gave. There's a lot of difference between the word gave and sent. God sent Peter to Jewish and Paul to Gentile. Peter went to the Jew, Paul went to the Gentile. What does that mean? God gave them responsibility to go to this group of people and preach the gospel. Paul, you go to the Gentiles and preach the gospel. That is sent, giving responsibility. But here, God is giving for the church. Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. But all the apostles are the apostles to the church. Because they are given by Christ. You understand? Yes. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Peter is the apostle to the Jews. Jews. But all the apostles are the apostles for the church. Because they are given. Hmm? So the Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the they say you cannot be perfect by one one apostle. You need all. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. God says, you know what? Don't stay in one place, man. Paul, don't go to the Jew. I send Peter. You know, who will go to the Gentile? You go to the Gentile and preach. Understand? The ministry. So, the ministry is divided and said, you go here, you go here, you go here and preach the gospel so the gospel may spread. All right, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. How is it possible? When you have all the apostles, when you have all the prophets, when you have pastors for the church, evangelists, and teachers. When all these things we have, we have the Old Testament, the prophets. The New Testament, the Apostles. So everything is needed. If you want to grow into maturity and get edification and do the right ministry, you need everything. Amen. Not just Paul. You need all. Yes. Amen? Yes. All means? All. 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 So may the Lord add many more blessings. I hope this has been a blessing. And the Bible again tells us, study to show thyself, a prudent to God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Don't spend more time unnecessarily reading someone who wrote something on the internet. Kneel down, pray to God, and read and study the word of God. You understand? Yes. And you say, Lord, lead me to the truth. And if I'm wrong, teach me and correct me. And God will do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is what God gave me this morning as I was studying. And, and as I was studying my Bible, God just laid it in my heart. And here it is. And I started drawing it. When you pray and ask, God will give you. Amen? Amen. Alright. God bless you. Hope this is a blessing. Don't forget to subscribe to us. And click that bell icon. We want to be more of a blessing to you. God bless.